Pride Month is a time to celebrate the various identities that make up our wonderful and diverse community. It is also a time to reflect on and honor the powerful contributions of those who've come before us. We stand on the shoulders of giants. James Baldwin, Larry Kramer, Bayard Rustin, Sylvia Rivera, and Marsha P. Johnson. To them and countless other trailblazers, we are humbly indebted and forever grateful. If you'd like more information on the movement or recommendations on how you can help, go to blacklivesmatter.com slash partners. In these dark and difficult times, we hope that this episode brings you a little bit of joy and light. Welcome to this special Pride Month episode of the Big Gay Fiction Podcast. I'm Jeff. And I'm Will. In episode 165, author Sylvia Violet joined us to talk about how she got her start writing romance. She's been at this for a while, and if there is a gay romance subgenre, you can bet Sylvia has written it. From small town romances to shifters, from cowboys to daddy kink, she's done it all with her distinct flair for rich emotion, likable characters, and crazy hot sex. She's joining us today to talk about her newest series of dark mafia romances. Sylvia, thank you so much for joining us during our Pride celebration. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be part of it. We're thrilled that you're here because you're going to give us a, a, a sample of a book that's a departure from your normal writing. I am. Tell us what you're going to be reading from and what the book's about. All right. So I'm reading from Lucian, which is my newest release, and it's the first book in a mafia series called The Marchese Family. It's a little bit different for me because it's not super dark and it's still very much a romance, but it is a little darker, a little more violent, using mafia characters than what I typically write. In this book, Lucian has just taken over the family's organized crime enterprises from his father, who decided he was ready to retire and go lay on a beach in the Caribbean. And um, he decided, he's, Lucian is working through, you know, what leadership is going to be like for him and solidifying alliances. And he's got a rival family who's causing some trouble. And my other main character, Peter, has been through a series of terrible jobs. He got through a temp agency. He's feeling kind of down, kind of desperate. And his cousin, Jimmy, who was not a reliable person, <laughs> tells him about a job opportunity that sounds too good to be true. And Peter really wants to believe it's what it is, but knows probably not, but decides to check it out. And it turns out to be a receptionist position for Lucian at sort of their front business property management company. And the moment Lucian sees him, he's like, yeah, you're keeping this job and I'm keeping you. <laughs> Lucian is very, he's very dominant, very uh, much the, you know, in control guy. But through his relationship with Peter, finds comfort with his softer side and his willingness to open up to somebody other than his family. Mm -hmm. Before we jump into the reading, I wanted to ask, what, what sent you down this new path for your writing? For me, I like to change things up every once in a while because if I write the same type of book too many in a row, it just doesn't feel fresh for me. So I wanted to try something new. And I know one of the things that my readers like for me are you know, very sexy contemporary set books with at least some DS, BDSM elements. So I wanted to stick in that range, but try something new. And I had read some mafia books recently that I'd really enjoyed. And I thought, you know, that would be a fun thing to try. So that's kind of how I ended up there. Nice. Well, tell us what you're going to be reading from and any setup that we might need for it. Okay, so I am going to be reading from the second chapter, which is the first time the reader gets Lucian's point of view. And one of the themes in this book is family and the importance of family. So I'd seen a lot of comments recently about people really wanting more LGBTQ plus books that where the family is accepting of the character's sexuality and that homophobia, especially within the family, wasn't a major factor. 
And so even though in a mafia family, you might expect that to be an issue for the Marchese family, it's not. When Lucian came out, his parents accepted it and his father was like, anybody wants to make a comment about that and I'll make sure you're sorry for it. <laughs> and and then his younger brother and his younger cousin are bisexual and they felt comfortable coming out about that. So this section kind of shows a little bit of the family dynamic in a humorous way and also just sort of setting up that that piece of the book. Fantastic. All right. So again, this is in Lucian's point of view, just to make that clear before I start because it's first person. I straightened my tie and gave myself one final look in the mirror. Satisfied with the cut of my new suit and assured I'd exerted my usual level of control over my wavy hair, I went in search of my brother and my cousin. They weren't passed out half naked in the foyer again, which was something at least. I heard a sound from the dining room, but when I walked in, it was one of the maids bringing in a chafing dish. I didn't know why I'd thought Angelo and Devil would be eating at this hour. When I was especially bad as a child, our mother would send me to wake Angelo up. It was one of my least favorite punishments. And Devil's idea of breakfast was whiskey and a blowjob. I already wasn't looking forward to this day, and now I had to track down those assholes if I was going to have backup for a meeting with our allies. I read through some unpleasant messages, but enjoyed a chocolate croissant that our housekeeper had made especially for me and also took in enough caffeine that I thought I could face the day. And then I went in search of Angelo and Devil. I heard laughter coming from Angelo's room and opened the door without knocking. What the fuck are you two doing in here? Angelo was lying sideways across the bed, and Devil was stretched out on the sofa in the sitting area. The only response I got to my question was more laughter. They were the only two people who would dare show me so little respect. Have you been to bed at all? Devil frown. I don't think so. Angel, did we go to bed last night? I still used my brother's full name, but the two of them had been known as Angel and Devil since they were little kids. Angelo shook his head and then groaned and rolled to his stomach. If you're going to puke, get the fuck in the bathroom, I said. Angelo held up a hand. I'm good. No, you're fucking not. You're both supposed to be ready to go downtown. We've got business to attend. Devil huffed. You mean Damien Ricci coming after you? That's not business. That's just pest control. If he were working alone, that's all it would be. And I wouldn't have taken care of it. And I would have taken care of it without even involving you two idiots. But he's putting feelers out to anyone with a grudge against us. It's like he's finally realized he needs some strength behind him if he's going to make any kind of move. Who would listen to him? He's weak as fuck. Angelo sat up and ran a hand through his disheveled hair. And he's a moron. Ugly as sin, too, Devil added. I don't disagree with either of you. He's saying something that's making people listen, though. We're going to find out what it is, and we're going to track down everyone who's listening and make them sorry. Do I get to do the making them sorry part? Devil asked possibly, but you need to prove you can follow the rules this time. We haven't gotten where we are by being reckless, Angelo said in a voice clearly meant to mock me. Come on, Lucian. What's the point of all this power if we can't have a little fun with it? I started to speak, but Devil held up his hand. Wait, wait, I got this. If we have too much fun, we might lose our power. If you two keep joking around, you're going to lose it right now. I thought that I was ready to take over the family business when my father said he wanted to retire. And at times like this, when the only two men whose loyalty I've never doubted acted like fucking toddlers, I wanted to call my dad back from his months-long vacation and walk away. You know we love you, right, Luz? Angelo said. I know I hate it when you call me that. If you two assholes don't sober up and get downtown in the next hour, I'll call Nona and I'll tell her we just had an interesting chat and you two are ready to find some nice girls and settle down with them. Angelo's eyes went wide and his mouth fell open. You wouldn't. Devil started laughing so hard he fell off the couch. Technically, he was our cousin on my mother's side and Nona, my father's mother, wasn't his grandmother. But that had never stopped her from treating him like her own grandson. Devil's mother was disinterested at best, malicious at worst. 
Fortunately, she spent most of her time on another continent. A lot of people mistook Angelo and Devil, whose name was more or less a family secret, for twins. They were both gorgeous and charming and much too used to getting what they want. As far as I was concerned, they were a lot of fucking trouble. But I loved them. And if anybody said a word against them in my presence, they never made that mistake again. As if by magic, Angelo and Devil managed to look polished and wide awake by the time we needed to head downtown. I wondered if they would ever get too old to pull off that transition. At 32, I already felt like I was. They were only two years younger than me, but didn't have the weight of running the family business on their shoulders. The meeting with several of our allies was taking place at Distinguished Properties, the commercial real estate business we use as a cover for several of our other enterprises. We took the elevator to my office, and when the door slid open, I expected to see that little snake Jimmy sitting behind the reception desk and waiting to do my bidding. He'd once again failed to pay my family what he owed us. Out of respect for his late father's loyalty to me, I'd given him the chance to work off his debt. While I doubted he'd make much of a receptionist, he at least knew how to be charming and put people at ease. And if he were in my office, he wouldn't be getting himself in more trouble. But Jimmy wasn't there. Instead, a shockingly beautiful, blonde-haired twink sat at the reception desk. My brother didn't look a thing like an angel, except maybe the fallen kind, who would guide you straight to hell. But this boy looked like the sort of ethereal creature who would lead you to heaven after a hero's death. He looked up at me with his bright, hazel eyes. May I help you, sir? You can sure as hell help me, Devil said, propping a hip on the edge of the boy's desk. I didn't even know his name, but jealousy sizzled through me. I kicked my cousin's shin. Get the fuck off the desk and quit acting like an animal. Jesus, Devil said, rubbing his leg. Those shoes you love are fucking lethal. Angelo held out his hand to my new receptionist. I'm Angelo, and you're very clearly not Jimmy. The boy tentatively lifted his hand. Instead of shaking it, Angelo brought it to his lips. Back off, I growled. Where the fuck is Jimmy, and who are you? The boy's eyes widened, and color rose in his cheeks. Jimmy got another offer, and he asked me if I would come in his place. Your assistant, Miss Carla, she said it would be all right for me to have a trial day since there wasn't anyone else to do the job. I could see his pulse fluttering against the pale skin of his neck. I wanted to run my tongue over it. I wanted to see him quiver like that underneath me. I wanted to make him beg. But before I could consider any of that, I needed to know who he actually was and why Jimmy had sent him to me. That brotherly banter was awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. I had a lot of fun with with the three of them. Those three are going to be a handful in the books, I can tell. Yeah, yeah, they really are. So as we're here in Pride Month, tell me what pride means to you. So to me, pride means being able to be happy and comfortable with who you are, whatever your sexuality, whatever your gender identity, whatever you like and love you get to be that with no judgment against you. And also working to make a society where we, everyone can be comfortable in who they are, not just in private, but anywhere they go without needing to, to hide any part of themselves. Mm -hmm. Well said, well said. How could people keep up with you online so they could find out more about this book and everything else that'll be coming out for you later this year? My website is sylviaviolet.com, and you can see all my books there, sign up for my newsletter, and get some freebies as well. I'm on Facebook. My page is Sylvia Violet Author, and my group is Sylvia Salon. I'm on Instagram as sylvia.violet, and if you follow me on BookBub, you will get announcements of any new releases I have coming up. Fantastic. We will link up to all that stuff in the show notes page. Thank you so much for joining us for our Pride Celebration and for giving us a sample of that new book. You're very welcome. It was nice talking to you. We hope you've enjoyed this special Pride Month bonus episode. 
Remember that the pride that we have is something we carry within us, no matter the time of year. So be proud, be strong, and above all else, be you. Thank you so much for listening. For a complete rundown of this month's bonus content, go to BigGayFictionPodcast.com slash Pride2020. Big Gay Fiction Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. You can find more shows you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. New episodes of this show are available every Monday wherever you get your podcasts. You can help support this show with a monthly pledge through Patreon. For more information about joining our community and the bonus content we deliver, check out patreon.com slash biggayfictionpodcast. I'm Kurt Graves. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Thank you.